Welcome to our class and let's get started with interactive Google Slides. You're probably wondering what that really means, right? Let me show you some examples. So I do have a presentation, but this was made when I thought I was going to be in person. So there really isn't much on that if you got that shared with you. But I just actually literally made this a few minutes ago in the last class. And in that class, I was demonstrating how when a student opens up Google Slides, it could be interactive just because it has audio. So maybe they're interacting with that audio piece. And this is an example where I just went to the website. I copied and pasted the text from Robert Frost's poem. And then I had recorded, actually had that for, I've had that for a few years, this audio recording. And I gone up to insert menu and slides and I picked audio. Now certain audio files will work, others won't. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, I had a teacher, a music teacher even say to me recently, hey, not all my audio files are working. And I had suspected at the time she was recording them on her iPhone and shoot, you know, that M4A file may not play on a Chromebook. So make sure you pick a common audio file like MP3. That is the one that is universal and will record, uh, sorry, will play on all devices. So after inserting this, all a student would do is click the speaker and it drops down a play bar. There's a metaphor we often use when talking about memorization. We say to know something by heart. It All right, so this was my little example. What's really important, if you are building an interactive slides file, and that's all the interaction is, read, listen, then make sure your audio file is also shared. It's very important if it's a Screencastify video, if it's an audio, if it is a media file saved in your Google Drive, you gotta share the separate file. So this is inserted. I would have to go look for this file in my drive. So in my drive, if I was looking for audio files, I'll show you here, and I just, I'm gonna grab any audio file. You don't, <laughs> that was funny because I had a keyword stuck on there. There we go. I can look at the audio files on my Google Drive. I don't have to open them or anything. I go up to the toolbar that appears once you select a file, and then I go up to the share icon. The share setting your media, your audio, your Screencastify recordings need to have will be anyone on the internet can find it um, as long as they have the link. So see that I can have public or there was another layer of setting, but honestly, they're not going to find this unless you give them this link. And so it's wide open. They're only gonna be able to listen or view that file. They can't change it or comment on it in any way. So that is the setting. Now, do you have to do this for every file? Not necessarily. You could go into your drive, make a folder and call it audio files. And then share the folder. When you have a folder already set up to share, the same way I just showed, guess what? Every file you drop inside that folder inherits the share setting automatically. So that will dramatically cut down the work and make sure those files are shared. Now I saw in here, I did have a file genes. So this is an MP3 file. And I'll show you if I wanted to make a spelling test. So an interactive Google spelling test. Uh, in Google Slides. So people all the time ask me, how can I do a spelling test in a Google form? Well, you know, that just might not work. So here I'm going to prompt the student spell. Let's see, click the audio to listen and type the word. So 
So down below is where the student can type. I go up to insert and I pick audio. I'm gonna type genes because that was the spelling word. And that inserted my little audio way down there in the corner. And so we have audio choices, you know, what has to happen? Does it play automatically? Do I want to make the kids click on it? It's my choice. So I also think the button's a little small down there in the corner. So I'm going to make that bigger. And then they can click that. And I believe when I shared my screen, you all can hear this. And I can test that out. Jeans. Teachers can wear jeans on Casual Friday. And then a student would go ahead and type the word they heard. So I am skipping the steps of going to classroom, assigning, making a copy for each student. But this is technically an interactive Google Slides file. Now, I want to clear out all our responses and in our participants panel, if we have any teachers already doing this with audio, give me a, a green check. Give me a yes. You already do this with audio in Google Slides. So look for your participants panel. You might have drifted off onto your own slides file. Nobody, okay, Linda, great. Nina, just a few of you. Don't think it's for primary only. What about your upper level kids and you have a very complex strategy, uh, process to follow, and you can add this personal touch of your audio recording to that presentation. So maybe give this a shot. Some of you are probably wondering though, what do I use for audio recording? And I just kind of gave you that example. Maybe your phone isn't gonna give you the audio file you need. You can still record with your phone. You just need to record and then convert the file to MP3. And then, um, and I see Ashley asking in our chat actually, do I have a suggested voice recording? Not an extension, but there's several websites out there that they don't ask for anything personal. They don't save or track your audio. So you can do voice recorder right on your Microsoft Windows computers. So that's built in. And that will record WAV files. And those files will also play nicely with Google Slides and your Chromebooks. So you don't have to go online. And uh, if you do use like an iOS device, you're gonna wanna make sure you convert your M4A file into something more universal like MP3. So MP3 and WAV files, those are the type you guys are going to want to try. So here's another example of another interactive file. Simple. The teacher has the title of this book. It's a read aloud. The students can play it. King of the Playground by Phyllis Reynolds Naylor. And then the students would come down and complete the story elements. Now the teacher didn't go too far with this. Maybe they could have added text boxes here for the students. But at the time, this group of students had access to iPads. So on an iPad, uh, they were just using scribble tool, but really the type tool is the best for those students. Um, because when you open up your files on an iPad, it will convert them into a PDF that's editable. And on the mobile version of Google Classroom, it lets you have a drawing tool. So again, it's interactive because there's video portions. So some of you use Edpuzzle, and I know there's a session on Edpuzzle. This would be the simplified version of Edpuzzle. The nice thing when you insert video into into Google Slides. King of the. And I'm trying to get to the settings for this one to Playground show you them. By Phyllis. Show you all. I want my video. Reynolds Nailer. Options. Let's see. There we go. Sorry about that. Usually clicking would, uh, the video would pop off to the side, the options I was looking for. 
So when you insert YouTube videos, whether they're yours or someone else's, I love that it allows you to cue the video. So you may be using Google Slides just as a tool for yourself. You probably get tired of finding a, a video on YouTube. Before the kids walk in, you queue it up. Well, guess what? If you throw that video into a Google Slides presentation, you can set the queue and year after year or class after class, it's gonna start at the right part and it's gonna stop. So you can take a long video and chunk it into short pieces on different slides. So here I have options to play manually or automatically, as well as on a click. And then I can move this, trim this at the beginning or at the end to start and stop when I want. Sometimes you don't want the audio. It's a matter of us just looking at the visuals and responding to them. So they do have a nice feature to mute audio. So I wanted to show you that interactive playing a video in a slide could be simple as responding to the video immediately after inside the slides file. Again, a teacher would go to Google Classroom, make a copy for each student, and then come inside to see the student responses. Now, let me ask the, uh, some of you out there again. The first one, I'm gonna clear all our feedback. First one was just audio. How many of you have made an interactive Google Slides file with a video in it? And you just ask the students to respond. Go to the per participants panel. Give me a, a yes if you've done this already. Okay. Oh, a few more this time. Alyssa, Carla, Kay Dai. Sorry, I don't know your first name. And Linda, Mina, great. All right, so a few more of you have done that. That's, that's awesome. I often see, and this happened with my own daughter last year, the teachers would post to Google Classroom the video. Then they had a separate page, a separate file for the students to respond. Why do those have to be two separate pieces? Why not put them together? And now the students and parents only have one file that they have to click. And then they're also doing them in the order that you want. Because when the video is posted separate and then the slides file is separate in your classroom, they could click and, and open up the slides file and never watch the video and miss the video if you have a lot of things posted that day. So if I was going to put my own Screencastify into a, this Google Slides file, I absolutely could. So I would wanna make sure on my slide, I'm gonna have to make sure the video from Screencastify is shared just like I commented with the audio file. So any of you who use Screencastify, because you're not gonna find a lot out there that works for you, by all means, record your own, and then you put your, your Screencastify video right into your video slide. I will say this though, I'm not 100% sure you're gonna get all the bells and whistles with queuing up the video. And so I will show you quickly here a simple way to make sure all your Screencastifies are set to go. I'm clicking here at the top right on the Screencastify extension. And then at the top, it lets you go to your recordings. So this is my Screencastify recordings. This is a folder that's in your drive. And so I wanna go to this folder in my drive so I can change I'm clicking at the top right on the three dots, open and drive, and I'm gonna change the share settings. So right here, Screencastify, and then I could have clicked this icon. It's telling me it's already shared. So I hit share, and there we go. Now, right now, mine is set that anybody in my group can view. 
I'm going to open that up. That way, all new Screencastify recordings will have this more open, easier to access link. So anyone with the link, that means that Google Slides file has my video in it, it's going to get access to my video. So I'm going to click done since that's shared now more openly. Now let me quickly go to insert and I'm going to pick video. And it's not coming from YouTube. I'm going to get it from Google Drive. I know I just did an ABC mouse video. Oh, I did Super Kids yesterday. So here is a quick video out of Screencastify. I'm going to hit select because I wanted to check to see if this video, and I'm just butchering my, my own file here, but look at that. Good glory, we're going to get the Q features even with our own Screencastify videos. So I'm kind of learning something there because um, I, I still use mostly YouTube in my situation. So I thought I'd, I'd demonstrate to show you your Screencastify videos can be queued up. So let's look at some more interactives because you're probably like, nah, that's not very interactive. And I apologize, this is more of a primary. It is a kindergarten activity. You can bring in images. And the cool thing, so here's one of the pros, the, the neat features of slides. While you're in the edit mode, students can have objects staged, waiting for them off the edges of the page. That's what is awesome here with slides. A lot of people, the first time they do an interactive, they thought that they were supposed to go up and hit present. You don't. Your kids, they don't. Don't go to present. You'll need to keep them in edit mode in order to manipulate and move the objects. So if I wanted to insert and go find images, you don't have to get these manipulatives um, from any place special than their search. So if I wanted a counter, maybe counter, we'll see what I get. And it's not the math counter that I want. And I'm probably not doing a great job with my keyword. Let's see, math base 10. I'm still not getting what I want out of this search. And this is for Google search. It is a public domain or anything that's copyright friendly. So I may have to pop out of this search to get exactly what I want. But I'm going to stick with fish then. I was hoping to just get a different style counter. I added PNG at the end, or I could add the word transparent. That way, the objects I bring in that are manipulatives are going to have a transparent background to them. So I don't see anything. Ooh, how about fish sandwich? Let's get this guy. He might not be what I want, but we'll see. Sure, he looks okay. I really didn't want the text. And so I will warn you, if you get something like this and you're tempted to crop, you say, okay, I'll just crop that off. There we go. Now that, that name is not there. I want to say that is a pitfall you want to avoid. Or if you bring in an entire picture with all the objects and then you just crop for each little object. I, I have a bad example I'll show you here. Avoid doing that if, if it's possible. But when you are trying to bring in manipulatives like this, they can stage be staged off the edges of the surface of the slide itself. If you don't know about this keyboard shortcut, and anytime you need to copy and paste on the same page, save yourself some time, control and the letter D. So I'm going to show you here on my screen, I'm going to do control and actually I'm on a Mac, so it'll be command, but control D, D, D. I get duplicates. So anytime you want to quickly copy and paste, it's okay if it's just one item. But if you're 
duplicating objects, control D on your keyboard is a nice shortcut. And now you have these manipulatives all stacked up. Now, when this one was made, they didn't let them all be scattered. They're all stacked right on top of each other. So the student thinks that's cool. That's like the infinite cloner in Smart Notebook. So this is interactive because students can manipulate the objects. They can also type inside these boxes. And when this is designed, you have to ask yourself, what do I want them to move? What do I want them to leave alone? And so this is where a student can build their own math problem. The manipulatives are still waiting, but I don't want them to move the picture. I don't want them to change. This should be a subtraction problem. I don't want them to do anything to the equation other than type numbers in these boxes. So that's a text box over each line. So some people insert an image in the background. And when you go to background and insert an image, that's going to lock that to the page so the students don't move it around. So avoid just going in and inserting an image and saying, hey, that's great because kids will accidentally grab the background and uh, they will move it around. So I have thought about this in my last group and I, I'm a little late to ask you guys, what grade levels do we have here? Can you open up the chat and tell me that way? Cause I know my examples are heavily primary but I wanna be sure I can move up to levels too. All right, so we have definitely all range. We do have all the way up to, to grade 12. All right, so this is an example starting in Google Slides. And you'll realize many of your own handouts, if I wanted a student to now type in text to complete these words, then I need to somehow get this image in here. And I wanna ask you all in the chat, what is the difference between the layout from this example, the ocean edition to this one? And you can put it in privately, you can put it in to everyone in the chat. What is different about the slide layout? Here's example one and example two. Okay, got at least one person. Ah, yep, they're shooting in the chat now. Thank you. Vertical versus horizontal. So as you design a lesson packet with interactive items, you have to make sure that they're all going the same way. I could not put these two files together. That would be a problem because in Google Slides, it's only gonna to want to have one orientation. Where do you go to find that? You go up to File, slide down to Page Setup, and you can choose Custom. It's going to start on one of these standard widescreen or um, more landscape layouts, but you pick Custom, and if you're trying to match your paper, because if this is a scanned PDF, you can match it there and then hit apply. So eight and a half by 11, that will fit. And students then can just change this view so they can zoom in and work on the file to see each section. Now, this is just an image in the background. So let me show you here, if I go ahead and hit background, I need to have an image. I can't just open up a PDF. So to stage where you take a PDF and make it interactive, you're going to need that PDF open. So here I have one called animal adaptations. I want to make this interactive. I want the kids to type in here. Now, honestly, this is an example I use for Cami. I would say if it's just text, Go use Cami. You guys have the full license for that. That's the route to go. But it was the, the PDF that I grabbed this morning. 
Now I need to change the view so I can get the whole thing to fit on my page. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, looks good. Now I can use whatever screen capture. I have save and snip on Windows. I have screen grab, whatever I wanna do. And then I don't have to go out with all those margins. And I now have a picture of this, a screenshot of this PDF. So that's step one. Step two then, you go into your Google Slides and select background. And when you click background, you're gonna go choose that image. So this one happened to go onto my desktop, so I'll have to upload it. And on my desktop, let's look for screenshot. Oh, lovely. I could also drag and drop. And it's not looking on my desktop how I thought. There we are. Ooh, that's the PDF. So because my desktop's not cooperating, I'm going to go grab it and drag and drop. So here's my screenshot, drag and drop. And that's my image. If this doesn't match proportionately, you're going to see it kind of skew or warp a little bit. So keep that in mind. You could always play around with your dimensions under file and page setup. So we have a match, then I can come in and I could add text boxes, I could put a note off to the side, I could have images or guidance for the student and make this interactive, even though it was just a worksheet before. It's still a worksheet they can complete, but I can have an audio file read it to them or give suggestions. So let me ask out there, I'm going to clear out our, our nonverbal responses. Who out there has already done something like this where they have a worksheet and now you've put it into a Google Slides file to make it interactive. So look in our participants panel, go look for the little green circle if you have done this. So Amy, oh, and I believe we have two Amy's. Nice, you two have done this already. And Linda, I'm gonna ask Linda to start teaching some of these classes or this one, cause she's done a lot of these already. I hope you're getting something out of this. Sometimes, you know, you, you think you'll catch something new. And uh, if you're, you're doing many of these, then that's, that's wonderful. So here's where I wanna share some of those things to avoid or pitfalls. And uh, this was my daughter's first grade teacher's example from last year. And my daughter completed, this was nice. The background is locked. So I'm, I'm trying to click, I can't change anything there. Great, uh, these are the objects to manipulate, awesome. Now kids are apt to bump the mouse more than once. So, oops, I just double clicked. Can you all see what this teacher did to cheat? And I know it might be hard because of that background. So here's what I'll do. I'll copy this if I can. I'm gonna copy and just put it on a new fresh slide. Let's do a blank layout. And please put it in the chat. So if you know what that teacher did to get just one object at a time. So I'm gonna double click, which happens all the time. That might show up better for you guys. Okay, so Jerrica is giving us an answer that you could, that teacher just pasted and then cropped. Yep, Linda, you got it too. Don't do this. This is a nightmare because, uh, you know, a little first grader kept clicking twice or tapping twice and then it would reveal all the hidden objects. So please teachers, don't cheat. I know it takes more time for you to sit down and screen snip each one, 
But here's my thought with this. So since a few of you did answer, I'm gonna move on. Let's say you've got your stick. Great. This one, while it's displayed, I can do a new screen snip right over top of this. So I'm going to quickly do that. And you would do this with your typical screen snipping tool. You just get your selection and I'm going to make a snip of just that item. Great. And then I can copy it. And then I come here and I paste it. They look the same, right? But we know one of these, if a student double clicks, that's it, that's all there is. And if a student double clicks here, yikes. So it is okay as the teacher, if you left, you made one big snip off of the website, off of the clip art, wherever you got this, and you're just gonna sit here on the Google slide and go ahead, I'm not saving that one, and do another. Just snip them after you've made the group snip. And then I can copy paste. So that's my advice or a tip to you. If you're making these interactive, please don't cut corners and crop in because a student can. They're in edit mode just like you. They could come in and reveal the rest of the objects. And, and that's very confusing. All right. So I mean, I'm glad that we're, we're getting something new for some of you, since I've seen very few of you respond that you've done these already. And let me look here at another bad example. So here is one, again, first grade teacher. So this, this was handed out last year in the spring. And um, I'm going to leave it right there on that screen and ask some of you in our chat, what, what visually do you see? And again, this is first grade, but what, what is the problem here? Is there a problem? I mean, I am telling you it's a bad example, so I'm kind of giving you heads up. But the teacher has given us tiles, okay? And uh, well, I, I purposely left one of the tiles misaligned. So you could say, see that this was a single tile. Oh, good. Okay. There's no borders. The boxes are a solid color and it's okay. You know, you could have them be transparent. Um, there's no guide, true, to, to start measuring where do we start putting our boxes. But I'm really going to say, yep, that border. So if you're going to be measuring and using objects with students, it is not clear visually that this is one, two, three, four boxes. It looks like one long bar. So please, I encourage you if you're using shapes, which Google Slides is wonderful for, build your own manipulatives. Don't worry about going out and getting counters that I couldn't find. You can go in and build your own and make sure they have a border color. And I did this on purpose and talked with the teacher about it. You know, yellow, make them nice and thick, a nice thick border. And then, ooh, what was that keyboard shortcut? That I could make copies of this very quickly. Anybody wanna put it in the chat, remind us? Okay. Carrie Miller, we got control D and Kelly. Thank you both. So control D or command D if you're on a Mac, bang, bang, bang. Now the teacher can have these objects here. Now, that's not the only problem with this activity. This one, hoo -hoo, this one was a fight. Let me ask you all, now that I have clicked this rocket ship, and I know it's a primary example, but folks in high school, this applies to all of you as you're making objects you would manipulate. So if I was taking uh, different symbols and applying them and maybe building a flow chart, I want to be sure that the students can grab these objects easily. So anybody, you can unmute your mic or you can type in our chat. Okay, and I am getting one answer. 
And a question came in the chat too. So the answer, the problem, is that the picture does overlap the squares. It is difficult to move. So as soon as, as, soon as our, our students let go of one of these pieces and they get, uh, it's already a problem. See that? I can't even grab a piece here. I try to get that second piece and I just can't. And the teacher rotated that. So it made the border box overlap. So this is what you need to do folks, order. So I'm right clicking. When you make your interactives, make sure you send those objects. Really that should have been part of the background image. So I have to send that now all the way to the back. There we go. And now the student can grab the pieces the ones without borders, much easier to do this measurement. You cannot lock these boxes. So a student could even come in here and resize it and say, oh, that's what I measured. And you come in and a little surprised. Uh, that's why I would put this item. It's not anything they should manipulate. It should have been in the background. So here we go. Uh, there is only one minute. And if you do have questions, by all means, please type them into our chat so you can ask. But this was originally, let's see if I have this opened up. I probably have taken over the screen that I had ready for it. But this originally was a worksheet and I do know where that is. Go A I L. There we go. A worksheet for cut and paste, literally. And so if you don't have students in person and you want to give them that same drag and drop, cut and paste type activity, this was the PDF. All I did was take the screen snipping of the top half, and then I did the screen snipping, whoops, apologies, of the bottom half. And so this is how you can make interactive drag and drop activities, but I also had to replace, replace those instructions. So make sure if you are doing cut and paste that you truly give new instructions because these kiddos, I need to zoom out to show you, they are actually dragging and dropping these boxes. So that's it folks, I did go a minute over. Um, how would I, re um, this is from our chat, how to make my template. And um, I can quickly do that. Rest of you, if you wanna jump out, if you don't wanna see that review, by all means, uh, thank you for joining. And I hope that you found something in here that you can use, whether it's just audio, video, or even drag and drop type activities. So thanks for joining me. I'm gonna stop the recording and still do this review.